Hi guys, in this tutorial I'm going to be going through a basic lighting setup for outside renders and then like depth of field and the final rendering of uh, an animation. And yeah, let's get started. Okay, so first of all, let's go ahead and model the sun because we're going to use that as our default light. So let's do that. So make a plane. Um, let's also load in the texture, so materials tab and double click, make texture. And keep in mind, these textures are, uh, if you watched my first tutorial, I show you how to get all the Minecraft textures. So we go ahead and environment and we should have the sun texture in there. Press no, and let's also copy and paste this into the Lumens channel, make sure sampling is none. Luminance paste in there, and then, okay, we can click and drag it onto our plane. Now on the plane, we just make the width segment zero, and this segment zero, and then negative Z. Let's move this up, hold shift and move it up. And now we can stretch, let's stretch the texture. So keep in mind, I already know the coordinates. So it's 400, so you stretch it 400 degree, sorry, 400% on the U and 400% on the V. And then we move it into position to negative 150 and negative 150, like so. So let's do that and like that. Okay, now it's in the correct position. So we can now we can make the plane editable and let's copy and paste it into our scene. So control C, control, and then we go into our scene and control V and now we have the sun and let's just move it up for now because now that we have the sun in the scene we can go ahead and add a light so I'm going to use the sunlight because that's the most basic sort of form of rendering and it's very easy to use and plus it's the render times aren't that long so we can go ahead and use that so uh, later on in the tutorial series I'll go and go over some advanced lighting setups and stuff but for now let's use the sunlight and let's change the distance to 30,000 like so and make sure the time in whatever the date is somewhere around here or something it's up to you and then let's move this to like say 30 longitude like so and then we should have the sun like about there so now let's go ahead and parent this sun object to the sunlight like so so just drag and drop it in and zero out the position so you can either zero it out here in the coordinates so zero 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 or you just press this button on top and it'll just snap right to the parent object and let's just move this back a little because it's intersecting with our light as you can see so let's just move this back and now we shouldn't have a problem and keep in mind we need to add a compositing tag because if we if we were to render it out using the sun at the back it's going to cause some shadowing errors so let's let's make sure our compositing tag and then we just remove shadows and the j rays and stuff and that should fix that problem so now we can go ahead and scale this up a little and like so i like it nice and big so that should be around the right size and now let's go ahead and add a lens effect so if you click on our light and go into lens and then we can create a lens effect so let's do that to so default so this creates like a nice so if i render it out now you can see it's creating that huge glow so let's just reduce this a little to around the brightness to around 32 percent okay so as you can see there's a small problem if we render it here and we move back a little the lens effect is going to be the same size so we need to change that by going under the lens settings and going to low distance scale so that'll keep it the same size always and we have to change the reference size to something so let's change it to like around 20,000 um because that'll be this kind of the same scale as the sun and yeah now it's going to just remain that same size uh, no matter where we are. Okay, so now that we have the light set up, we can go ahead and load in a sky. So let's do that. So sky, and then we can make a new material for the sky. So keep in mind, I'm going to put a download for this material in the description. So yeah, I'm going to load that in. It's a sky texture. So it's a nice, nice cartoonish looking texture. And we can go ahead and use that as the sky. So click and drag it onto the sky object we made. And as you can see, it's not in the right position, the clouds. So let's go ahead and change the UV, uh, UV map uh, offset. So let's change the offset on the V axis a little bit lower so that we'll move the clouds up. Let's move it a little higher. So like so, just, and that should be our route, right, for the clouds. Now we have the light in the sky set up. So if you render it out now, it's gonna look quite terrible, but keep in mind, you can actually use ambient lights to make it look cool in the default render so I use this if you if you download my rig and you have um, if you go into the lighting setups there's this ambient house uh, let me just quickly show you this so this is a default lighting setup and I'm gonna go into more detail later on in the tutorial series but if I render this out in here 
Okay, so as you can see, I rendered out this scene using the default render settings and ambient lighting, and it took very few amount of seconds to render this um, this entire scene. And yeah, I suggest you learn about ambient lights in my in my rig. You should have the ambient lights in here so as a def like a sort of preset, so you can just have a look in there to see how it works. And yeah, so check it out. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and go into the render settings. So let's click this, and this is where we can add all our effects we want. And yeah, so output, I already showed you how to change this in the camera tutorial. Uh, current frame, we're just gonna set it like that for now. And let's change this to best and like two. So this smoothens out the render. So the pixels, you don't see the pixels as much as like smooths it out and stuff. Keep in mind, it adds a little bit of render time. So now let's go ahead and add a ambient occlusion. This is optional. I, I don't use ambient occlusion much, so I just turn it off for now. And then let's, it's ambient occlusion adds quite a bit to the render time. So yeah, and then let's add a global illumination and I changed it to low and low here. So that'll increase the render time. And yeah, global illumination is kind of the main thing that makes our, our setup look good. And then lens effect as well, that'll give us the lens effect on the sun. If you don't have it on, there's no, not gonna be any effect on the sun and it'll look uh, quite crappy. So effect, and let's add one more thing, which is depth of field. So that I'll go through later on in this tutorial. And one more thing is color correction. So you can go ahead and change this. You can do like Alt R, I believe, and you can like double check. You can just go ahead and like change this up and see what saturation works and everything. Um, it's up to you. So I'm, I'm gonna do that in post editing. So let's not just let's just delete that. For now. Okay, so now if you render it out, you're gonna see it's gonna turn blue because of the sky map that we have. It's blue, so we need to turn that off because we want to do that in post editing, the the color correction and stuff. So let's go into our sky texture like so, and go into editor, uh, sorry, illumination, and change the generate GI saturation to zero, and that should fix that and make our render white. So let's go ahead and render it out now. This is the render, as you can see we got the lens effect and everything and as you can see there's a small error here. So this is the alpha channels messing up. Cinema 40's alpha channels are just really bad so we need to go ahead and delete that. I'm just gonna leave that here for now the, and just ignore it. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and add some of the settings. So let's actually add on uh, ambient occlusion and I'll show you what that does to the render. Because now we're gonna go ahead and add a fog. So I really like the effects it gives. So let's click on create an environment and click on this and enable fog. And let's actually change the distance to say around 50,000. And then we can click on effect background. So we want to turn that off. Otherwise the sky will kind of be white with the fog. So now let's go ahead and render it out and see how it looks. Okay, so now as you can see, this is the new render. So as you can see, the ambient inclusion is creating this nice dull shadowish effect on the corners of the blocks and the fog adds a little depth to our, our render. I'm gonna go ahead and add a filter to our sky. So this will make, uh, I wanna make it a little darker. So let's do that, so color. So keep in mind, you can add this to any texture you like. So this is a quick tip as well. So filter, and then let's change the hue maybe a little bit, and then add a little bit of darkness to it. And now let's render it out and see how it looks. Okay, so as you can see, now the sky looks a little better in my opinion. And this, the clouds stick out a little more than in the previous one. So yeah, that's why I did that. And also you, you can see the alpha channel of the grass is messing up. This is why I hate alpha channels in Cinema 4D, because it just messes up um, renders. So I suggest you delete those objects and just add your own um, models to the um, to the set. And okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and add our depth of field. So this really improves our render and makes it look nice. So let's go ahead and do that. So click on our camera and em enable front blur and rear blur under our details section here. And now that added two new boxes on the back and the front of our focus area. So let's go ahead and now change our focus area to our character. Okay, so now what we want to do is to move our focus area to our character. So let's move this. The, so you can click on the middle of the box and just drag it out and that'll that'll move both the rear blur and the front blur um, also so we can now reposition this to say like the middle between the character and their camera that's what I normally do and I said this one like sort of same distance apart as the the this these two blurs and then it focuses and now let's go ahead and go into our camera and if you render it out because now as you can see it's blurred out the front over here and blurred the back so we, it's a little too blurry so let's go ahead and change in the render settings so let's click out of this and click here under settings and changing the blur to around 3% and now let's render it out. Okay, so I'm gonna blur it out a little more, just put it at 4% and that should be about right. 
Okay, so now we need to fix the keyframes of our depth of field. So let's turn on auto keying. So as you can see, the camera switches into this position and that's gonna ruin our depth of field. So let's now uh, fix that by moving this say here and then moving this one over here and that should fix that but as you can see it's gonna you can see that that's kind of messed up so let's go ahead and fix that as well so key that into the correct position like so and just there we go and now it should stay a little bit so like so and now when you go here it should be fixed and yeah so now i don't think we need uh maybe a little bit so let's go ahead and keyframe this by moving this a little bit here uh, like so and let's now see if that's fixed no let's move this back a little and that should be all right so now as you can see the camera is fully focused on our character and we can start the rendering process now i would suggest you render out quickly just the different uh, camera angles like so just to see if there are any issues so i saw there were some issues here so uh, as you can see there's a black texture and the depth of fill is not working with the alpha channels so that's so that's what i mean by alpha channels in cinema 4d just make sure you just double check and get this fixed i'm not going to fix it because i'm too lazy okay so keep in mind my rig has this ambient lighting option so it makes it little, look a little better and brighter so this is without it and yeah so keep in mind i'll make a tutorial on this uh, in the future so yeah stay tuned for that now that we have tested our render and see if everything is sorted we can go ahead and start the render the final rendering and let's go into our render options and save and let's suggest you save it as a jpeg sequence because if you say stop the render in the middle you can go ahead and resume from that same spot and just finish the sequence if you have a movie file you'd have to separate it over and over again and that's just annoyance plus jpegs are quite small in file size so it's also um, gonna be good on your hard drive. Now let's save it to our desktop. So let's go into our desktop and make a new folder and I'm, I'm gonna name it tutorial and let's go into that and name it whatever. So tutorial like so and save. It's important to make a new file because otherwise it can mess up your desktop because it's gonna, it's gonna create a ton of JPEGs and you don't want that. So next thing we wanna do is change this to all frames and if you want you can change the FPS to 24 or something. Uh, I'm gonna leave it at 30. And yeah, now we're ready to start the render. Now I'm gonna hit the render button, like so, and we're gonna start the render. Okay, so that concludes this tutorial. As you can see, I finished the final render, and it looks pretty cool. And yeah, in the next tutorial, we're gonna cover post-editing. And yeah, thanks for watching, and see you in the next tutorial.